Hi everybody, thanks for watching. So for the past couple of months, I've been researching the term cinematic footage. You know, I've often poked fun at that term because it's a very common tagline in a lot of drone videos and other video tutorials on YouTube. And everyone is searching for that way to get the best cinematic footage, including myself. You see, video is relatively new to me. You know, I've always been interested in it. and I've always dabbled in it with family videos and other things like that. But only in the last year have I truly put some serious efforts into learning as much as I can about it. Not only for my own knowledge to make better videos with my drones, but also in an effort to bring the information to you guys as well. Now today I'm going to discuss one of the most common things themes when it comes to getting cinematic video footage and that is ND filters. Now when you talk about cinematic footage there's a lot of things that make up what's considered cinematic and it's also very subjective but there's some common rules to getting cinematic footage and one of the most important rules is using the right shutter speed. Now last year I did a video on ND filters with my Mavic Pro and you know it was a useful video it had some information in there that was useful but you know it really wasn't a good test because I was shooting from up high and you really couldn't see a big difference between using an ND filter and not using an ND filter and I've learned quite a bit in the past couple of months and so what I wanted to do is share that information with you guys and talk about the use of ND filters on your Mavic Pro and your Mavic Air and how they can help you attain that cinematic footage. So when you hear the term cinematic footage, what exactly do you picture? Like what is the goal? Well for many people it's the aspiration to create a look that mimics what we see when we go watch a movie on the big screen or even in our own living room. You know it's a look that involves matching the movement as close to possible as when you actually see it with the human eye. Now one of the settings for your Mavic Pro and your Mavic Air is frame rate. As far as frame rate goes, 24 frames per second most closely matches the human eye. In the past I've mostly shot in 30 frames per second because I like how it looks but to be truly considered cinematic, you should always choose 24 frames per second. The next setting to look at is your shutter speed. Basically, the shutter speed determines how long each of those frames are exposed to light. When choosing shutter speed, you need to consider the 180 degree shutter rule, which means that you should be as close to double your frame rate as possible. So if you're choosing a 24 frames per second rate, then you should choose a 1 over 50th shutter speed here. Now 48 is double 24, but since our drones don't have a 48 shutter speed, then 50th is the closest. Now why should you choose these settings? Because it allows your recording to have just the perfect amount of motion blur. And motion blur equals real life equals cinematic. So why do we need ND filters for our Mavic Pro and our Mavic Air? So let's say you go out on a bright sunny day like today and you have your frame rate set to 24 frames per second and you dial your shutter speed down to 1 50th but then you look at your screen and it's all blown out. Now on a normal DSLR camera or on a higher end drone, you can adjust what's called the aperture. The aperture restricts the amount of light that's coming into the sensor. By closing down the aperture, you can limit the amount of light that comes in. Now the problem is our Mavics have a fixed aperture, so we can't change that. So even if we have all of our settings perfect and it looks overexposed, we need to do something. We have to put something on top of that lens to further restrict the light. And that thing is an ND filter. And basically the higher the number of the ND filter, the more light that is restricted. So on a day like today with the sun high in the sky, I would normally try an ND16 first. Now if that doesn't allow me to lower my shutter speed to 1 over 50, then I'll put on an ND32. Now the problem with that is if you put on your ND32 and you have 24 frames per second and 1 over 50th speed, what happens is it might be a little bit too dark. And that's when you need to adjust your ISO. Basically your ISO sets the sensitivity of your sensor to the light. Now normally you want your ISO to be as low as possible because if you start to get into those higher ISOs, then your picture starts to get just a little bit grainy. So you want to keep that as low as possible. But in the end, the most important thing to get that cinematic footage is to have 24 frames per second and 1 50th shutter speed. So if you have to bump up your ISO a little bit, that's okay. Now with these filters that I'm going to be using today, the ones from Polar Pro, they're also polarizer filters. And that's what the PL stands for. Very simply, a polarizer filter has three benefits. It reduces glare, it saturates your colors, and it makes skies look amazing. Now how do you use the polarizing effect on these? You simply rotate the filter until you get the desired effect. And normally what I do is I'll rotate the filter until that sky gets nice and dark, and then I back it off just a little bit. Now when should you use the polarizing effect of these filters? The best time to use them is when the sun is high, like today. And you're going to be filming at a 90 degree angle to the sun. So the best way to figure this out is you go ahead and point your finger at the sun like so. You stick your thumb up and then you rotate your hand around, keeping your index finger pointing straight at the sun. And any way that your thumb points, 
that's where you're going to get the best effect from the polarizer filter. So if the sun is right there, I want to shoot in that direction or in that direction, and that's going to give me a nice deep dark blue sky. On the other hand, if you're filming against the sun or away from the sun, that polarizer filter isn't going to have any effect. The last thing to remember when you're using a polarizing filter is that they let in just a little bit less light. So again, you might have to adjust that ISO. So as I said earlier, I usually shoot in 30 frames per second, but in my effort to create better videos, and that's one of my biggest goals for this year, is to try to get better at making cinematic videos, cinematic footage. I wonder how many times I've said that in this video. I'll probably put a count at the end. But anyway, in an effort to learn how to do that, I'm gonna start using ND filters a lot more, especially on these bright sunny days. Now I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can get these Polar Pro filters. There's a lot of different brands out there already for the Mavic Air, also for the Mavic Pro. But I can tell you from experience that these ones from Polar Pro hold up well. You know, I've been using them on my Mavic Pro and my Spark for almost a year now, and they're still holding up well. And that's what the difference comes down to. It comes down to quality. You're pretty much gonna get the same effect from different brands, but what it comes down to is the longevity. And so I'm still using the same filters that I've used before, and with repeated installations, there's no problem at all. And then also, they don't scratch as easily as some of the cheaper ones. I have used some cheaper ones, and if you just touch them with your fingernail, they actually get scratched up. But the Polar Pro stands up really well. Now I should say, Polar Pro did send me these for the Mavic Air to try out, and that's what I'm gonna test out today. But I want you to know also that I have purchased other Polar Pro products for my Mavic Pro and my Spark, and so just so you know, this is really an honest review of them. Now, as I was preparing this video for today and as I was getting some B-roll for you guys, uh, this happened. So I'm currently doing a, uh, a seek and find for my Mavic Pro. I was shooting an ND filter video, trying to show you guys the difference between using different shutter speeds. And uh, I was using these trees as an example here and uh, this is one case where the Mavic Air beats the Mavic Pro and that's in rear obstacle avoidance I was uh, got a little bit too close to this side of the trees and uh, I hit one of these trees I'm not sure which one but I think it's this one so I'm doing a search and rescue for the Mavic Pro right now um, I don't know if it's stuck in the tree or what so we're gonna venture down here in the snow and uh, see if we can find it oh let's see I don't see it up in the tree anywhere and to me in the video it looks like it hit these branches right here but I don't see it. It's guessing that it's blending in quite well. So, oh, there it is. There we go. Okay, come on, buddy. Oh, this is not good. Still on, but looks to be okay. We have a broken prop, a lot of broken props. There we go. Well, at least I was glad I could recover it. Yeah, that's right. That's the third time in almost a year, almost a year to the day, that I've got my Mavic Pro that I've crashed it. And I inspected it, I checked it out. Everything is great, I put on some new propellers. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna hop in the vehicle, I'm gonna drive out to a nice wide open space where there's no trees. I'm gonna go to this really cool place just south of our community here. And I'm gonna try to get some cinematic footage. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys the difference of using an ND filter and not using an ND filter. And I think this is gonna be a better test than the one that I did last year because I'm gonna get up a little bit closer to the subject and I'm just gonna show you guys the difference of having motion blur on your footage. So let's take a little drive, let's head out in the country and show you guys what I got. Okay, so I'm gonna do this part from inside the vehicle because it's actually quite cold out. It looks really nice out, but it's still pretty chilly. It is warming up. It's actually above zero today, and so 
that makes me really hopeful that spring is on the way. But for now, it's still pretty cold out. So I'm gonna do it from inside my vehicle right now. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the Mavic Air up. I'm not gonna have an ND filter on it, as you can see right there. No filter on it at all. And I'm just gonna put it up and show you guys what it looks like when you have it set to 24 frames per second and 50 shutter speed, one over 50 shutter speed. So let's go ahead and get this up in the air. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on auto. I'm just gonna show you guys what auto looks like. And uh, let's pull up the settings here and you can see that the shutter speed is set to 1600 right now. And it's still um, overexposed. We do have the frame rate set to uh, 24 frames per second and 2.7K. I do like to shoot in 2.7K. I think it's a good balance between good quality and not so much file space. Um, the white balance, of course, we need to set that to sunny because it's a nice sunny day today. And then finally, uh, we're going to do decent alike and we're going to do a custom style where we have uh, one additional on uh, sharpness and then the other two are set to zero. So there's our settings and uh, auto is 1600. Now, now I want to set this video to shoot some cinematic footage and so let's go ahead and put the Mavic Air up. Take off. Alright, so let's get it up a little bit higher so we don't have to hear the buzzing. And as you can see right now we're at 2500 shutter speed. So not real easy to get cinematic footage when you're at a 2500 shutter speed. So I'm going to fly ahead here a little bit. Alright, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my manual to... We've got the ISO set as low as it goes to 100. And uh, we want to get that cinematic uh, footage, right? So we set it to 50. Now look at the screen right there. All blown out, completely white. Can't see a thing. So there's no way for us to get cinematic footage right now without uh, putting some sunglasses on our Mavic Air or an ND filter. And so let's see what we have to bring it up to to uh, bring that uh, exposure down. So right around 4000 puts us at a plus 0.3, one stop over uh, the appropriate exposure. So not too bad, a little bit over, but it shows you how much we need to bring it down. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to get a little bit of footage uh, using these settings right now. And so I'm just going to go ahead and record and we're just going to fly around the area here. And so where I'm at, I'm at one of the uh, wind farms near our community and uh, it's a pretty cool place. There's some pretty cool wind towers around here and it's really fun to see. I'm not going to get too close to this uh, wind tower, but I do want to show you guys kind of the difference between using this high shutter speed and then using the ND filter and getting the cinematic footage. And so I'm just going to go up a little bit so we can get these uh, blades right in the frame. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring it around to the side a little bit. All right, so that should be enough. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. I'm going to bring it back down. I'm going to put on uh, the ND16 and see how that changes our exposure. Okay, so we got the Mavic Air down. I'm actually gonna put on the uh, ND16, and uh, these are actually a little bit complicated to put on. I shouldn't say that. They're more complicated than the Mavic Pro. The Mavic Pro uh, Polar Pro filters, they just kind of pop right on. They have like a rubber seal, but with the Mavic Air, these are actually threaded, and so you have to thread these on. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this on uh, not too tight. You don't want to put them on too tight because these are really hard to get off if you screw them on too tight. And then we're just going to put the Mavic Air up now. We've got the ND16 on there and we're going to see what kind, of, uh, what kind of cinematic footage we can get with this. My guess is the ND16 probably isn't going to be quite enough uh, sunglasses, but we're going to try it and see what happens. All right, looks like we need to calibrate the compass. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so we got that done. <laughs> Boy, that's fun when someone drives by and you're calibrating your compass. I wonder what uh, what they're thinking. Okay, so now you can see on my screen here, it's pretty dark and, uh, well, we'll see. Let's go ahead and put it up. Take off. And let's get it up to the 
better height here. Now, as you can see, our shutter speed is set to 4,000. Well, uh, that's not gonna work, all right? So we need to dial that down. And the goal here, because we're at 24 frames per second, is to get to 50, uh, one over 50 shutter speed. And so we're gonna dial it down to 50. Now I'm gonna show you what happens as I expected. And so we're not gonna get the motion blur that we want. You know, to get it to the right exposure, I'm gonna have to dial it up to, it looks like about uh, a 240 shutter speed. And that gives us the proper exposure. The problem with that is uh, that's a little too fast of a shutter speed and so we're not going to get any motion blur so that's not going to give us you know kind of the look that we're uh, looking for and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Mavic Pro up and I do have an ND32 for my Mavic Pro just to show you guys the difference between using a higher shutter speed and a lower shutter speed but one thing that I do want to show you is uh, the polarizing effect of these filters now my Mavic Pro filters don't have the polarizing effect only these Mavic Air ones do and uh, as you can see already probably is uh, you see that the sky there is quite a bit more blue uh, than it was in the previous one and that's the effect of that polarizer that polarizing filter basically makes everything look a little bit richer uh, a little more saturated and makes skies look super blue and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down and I'm just going to turn that polarizer filter just a little bit just to show you how that affects um, the blue skies at least so Let's go ahead and bring it down. Okay, and so what I wanted to show you guys is, if I can bring it up on the screen here, is what happens when you rotate that polarizer filter. And uh, this polarizing filter is, uh, is kind of hard to adjust when it's on the gimbal, but as you can see as I turn it, see how much darker it makes the sky? And then I'm gonna turn it to the left, all right? and that lightens it up. And if you go further, it darkens the sky even more. And so what you wanna do is you wanna dial in that nice, rich, blue sky. All right, so that's about it right there. So I just wanted to show you guys that, and I wanted to show you how the polarizer worked on the Mavic Air. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the Mavic Pro up with the ND32. All right, so as you can see, I got the Mavic Pro ready. I got the ND32 on there, and so let's get this up in the air. So I got the Mavic Pro all inspected. It looks like everything's okay. I put new props on there. I can't believe I did that. I didn't realize I was that close to the trees, but it looks to be just fine. So, all right, let's go ahead and get this ready to go. Now I'm gonna wait a little bit until I get a GPS signal. Right now it's uh, still trying to get some satellites. And there we have 11 satellites, and GPS is ready to go. So, the home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Let's go ahead and check our settings. And so I'm going to dial that ISO all the way down to 100. You know, you want your ISO as low as possible. That gives you the nicest picture, the nicest video. And uh, let's just check our frame rate. I do have the frame rate set to 2.7K at 24 frames per second. That's the frame rate that we want. And let's go back into our settings here. And we're gonna dial that shutter speed down to 50. And I think we're gonna be okay. You know, we're on the ground right now. And I think once we get it up in the sky, that's gonna give us a pretty close to uh, exact exposure that we need. Let's check our other settings just so you guys know what they are. We got a sunny white balance. We're doing true color. Let's go ahead and change that to decenter like so it matches the other one. And uh, looks like everything else is okay. So let's go ahead and launch. Take off. Please check it on the map. All right, so there you can see, let's pull up the settings that we are properly exposed. It looks like it's just right. Uh, looks like maybe a, I don't know, 0.3 over, but I think that's gonna be just fine. Let's go ahead and fly around a little bit and uh, just show you guys the difference in uh, using a slower shutter speed. Okay, so let's bring it 
a little bit closer to the wind tower here. And we're going to go ahead and rotate it around it just like we did with the Mavic Air. Uh, and one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze frame this uh, in post processing just to show you guys the difference of motion blur and no motion blur. So let's rotate around this a little bit. guys so there's the difference in using a high shutter speed and a low shutter speed and in order to get the right shutter speed for cinematic footage you have to use an ND filter now on a day that's not so bright as today like a cloudy day or maybe a hazy day maybe it's not quite as important but if you have a sunny day and you want to get that shutter speed down to the proper rate then you really need to put on some sunglasses on your Mavic Air or your Mavic Pro so I hope that was helpful I hope you guys got some information of value out of that if you did, go ahead and click on that thumbs up button, that like button, that helps out this channel so much. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, go ahead and put those down below in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to learn more about the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro and see more testing and more tutorials and comparisons, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and join this community. I want to thank you guys sincerely for watching and as always, fly safe and fly smart. So since we're up here, I'm going to fly around a little bit more, try to get some cinematic footage. If you've watched any of my other videos, if you haven't, please watch them. But uh, I like to put some cinematic footage at the end of each of my videos. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do today. Now, as you can see here, um, this is North Dakota. This is pretty much uh, where I live. Nice and flat, nice and open. Probably a really cool place to do a range test. I haven't done a range test. I think there's so many of them out there, what's the point of doing another range test? But if you guys want to see me do a range test, please let me know down in the comments and I'll do one. But if you've seen enough of them and uh, you want me to do something else, then that's fine too. I have no problem with that. I think we know the limits of the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro, but if you guys want to see a comparison of the two, just let me know.